Good morning. Welcome to the First United Methodist, welcome to the United Methodist Church of Nokomis, uh, the YouTube worship on this uh, 23rd day of, of um, May in the year 2023. Here's my calendar. Birthdays this week include Colton Sides, Matthew Orici, Alec Pavolka, and Elaine Goodwin. And Ken and Barb Brooks are celebrating uh, uh, an anniversary on the 25th. So we see them offer them the appropriate greetings. This is Pentecost Sunday, the day that we celebrate the birthday of the church. Come Holy Spirit, ignite our hearts with joy and confidence for God has done wondrous things for us. Come Holy Spirit, fill us with the power of the rushing wind that we may faithfully serve you in all that we do. For Christ has called each of us and blessed us. Come Holy Spirit, be with us today. Help us to boldly proclaim Christ risen. Let us pray. Amazing God, you call us today just as you called the disciples on the day of Pentecost. You challenge and support us, giving us the peace that our world needs. You point us to the pain of the cross and then remind us of the joy of the resurrection. Transform us, O oh God, through the power of your Holy Spirit. Help us to breathe deeply of the breath of life. Blow through us, blow through our worship and change our lives forever. Amen. We appreciate the ways that you have continued to support the church through this time uh, that hopefully we're getting out of, but we are not out of it yet. We ask you to send your tithes and offerings to the United Methodist Church of Nokomis, Post Office Box 156, Nokomis, Illinois, 62075. Blessing upon blessing has been given to us, O God, from your great bounty. Now we return these gifts to you. Bless these gifts and the lives that they represent and cause them to work for you in this world which you have loaned to us. In Jesus' name we pray. And let us continue on in prayer. Knock us off our seats, God, with the wind of your Holy Spirit. Don't let us just sit back and rest as though nothing important was happening. Remind us that you have come to bless and prepare us for your service. Now is the time of proclamation and celebration. Now is the birth of your church, not as an exercise in futility, but as a dynamic group of people who know you and love you as you know and love each of us. Set our hearts on fire. Make us joyful so that we find it difficult to sit back and watch. We want to be part of your healing love and mercy. We want to be people who bear the word so that your love for us is eternal. That Jesus Christ, our Savior, proclaimed and taught us that love in all he did and said, modeling for us, a new way to live. Pick us up and propel us forward into your creation. Help us to remember that you have given that you have given to us what we need to be your disciples. We just need to say yes to you. Now be with those whom we name silently in our hearts at this time.
Thank you for all the wondrous patience and blessings you pour into our lives and every day as we offer our lives back to you in joy and hope. In the name of the one who taught us to pray, <clears throat> our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> the story of Pentecost is in the book of Acts, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, and we'll hear from verses 1 through 39. When Pentecost day arrived, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound from heaven, like the howling of a fierce wind, filled the entire house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be individual flames of fire alighting on each one of them. They were all feared with the, filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. There were pious Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. When they heard the sound, a crowd gathered. They were mystified because everyone heard them speaking in their native languages. They were surprised and amazed, saying, Look, aren't, aren't all the people who are speaking Galileans? Every one of them. How then can each of us hear them speaking in our native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, as well as residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the regions of Libya, bordering Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism. Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the mighty works of God in our own languages. They were all surprised and bewildered. Some ask each other, what does this mean? Others jeered at them saying, they're full of new wine. Peter stood up with the other 11 apostles. He raised his voice and declared, Judeans and everyone living in Jerusalem know this. Listen carefully to my words. These people aren't drunk, as you suspect. After all, it's only 9 o'clock in the morning. <clears throat> Rather, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young will see visions. Your elders will dream dreams. Even upon my servants, men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will cause wonders to occur in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and a cloud of smoke. The sun will be changed into darkness and the moon will be changed into blood before the great and spectacular day of the Lord comes. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Fellow Israelites, listen to these words. Jesus Nazarene was a man whose credentials God proved to you through miracles, wonders, and signs which God performed through him among you. You yourselves know this. In accordance with God's established plan and foreknowledge, he was betrayed. You, with the help of wicked men, had killed, had Jesus killed by nailing him to a cross. God raised him up. God freed him from death's death, dreadful grip since it was impossible for death to hang on to him. David says about him, I foresaw that the Lord was always with me because he is at my right hand. I won't be shaken. Therefore, my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my body will live in hope because you won't abandon me to the grave nor permit your body 
nor permit your Holy One to experience decay. You have shown me the paths of life. Your presence will fill me with happiness. Brothers and sisters, I can speak confidently about the patriarch David. He died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this very day. Because he was a prophet, he knew that God promised him with a solemn pledge to seat one of his descendants on his throne. Having seen this beforehand, David spoke about the resurrection of Christ. He, that he wasn't abandoned to the grave, nor did his body experience decay. This was Jesus, God raised up. We are all witnesses to that fact. He was exalted to God's right hand and received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit. He poured out his, this spirit and you are seeing and hearing the results of his having done so. David didn't ascend into heaven. Yet he says, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right side until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, let all Israel know beyond question that God has made this Jesus whom you crucified both Lord and Christ. When the crowds heard this, they were deeply troubled. They said to Peter and the other apostles, brothers, what should we do? Peter replied, change your hearts and lives. Each one of you must be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is for you your children, and for all who are far away, as many as the Lord our God invites. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> God is good, and all the time, pray with me, please. <clears throat> God, we have heard your word read from, we have offered our petitions and prayer to you, and now send us your message for this day, so that the words of my mouth, the message, and the meditation of all of our hearts will be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Pentecost was a festival shared by Jews and Christians whose calendars are very similar at this time of year. While Christians celebrate Easter, Jews celebrate Passover, both of which are calculated by the moon. Fifty days later, Christians celebrate Pentecost as the holiday, the, um, as the birthday of the church, while Jews celebrate it as the commemoration for the giving of Torah at Mount Sinai. In Hebrew, the day is Shavuot, which um, along with the New Year, the Day of Atonement, Tabernacles, and Passover is one of the five holy days of the Jewish year. We celebrate the birthday of the church on Pentecost, which is also a resurrection, transformation of a bunch of frightened disciples into the apostolic founders of the church, thanks to the gift of the Holy Spirit. The festival was a Jewish one to begin with, a harvest festival that brought Jews from all over the civilized world to the temple in Jerusalem. They had to go. It was one of the three obligatory feast days of the year, and so they went and experienced the Holy Spirit. We hear in both Luke and Acts, written presumably by the same author, uh, telling the story of what happened to the disciples, the apostles, after uh, Christ's ascension into heaven that we celebrated last week. We hear them. We hear from Luke, uh, chapter twenty-four, verses fifty-two through fifty-three, 
They had been in the upper room praying and worshiping for 10 days. Well, starting with uh, verse 52, they worshiped him and returned to Israel overwhelmed with joy. And they were continuously in the temple praising God. And then from Acts uh, chapter 1, 13, uh, verses 13 through 14, you notice that Luke, it's right at the end, and Acts is right at the beginning. It's supposed to be a continuous narrative there. When they entered the city, they went to the upstairs room where they were staying. Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, Alphaeus' son, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, James's son, all were united in their devotion to prayer, along with some women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. They were worshiping and praying. When we are baptized or when we join the church, we either make a vow, a covenant, or a covenant, if we are unable to answer for our, ourselves, a covenant is made for us to support the church with our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. Now, the United Methodist Church of uh, United Methodist Church of the Resurrection in Kansas City, Kansas, wanted to make these covenants, the five covenants, more accessible and easier to understand. So here's what they come up with. For prayers, they would they said worship, in, including prayers. For presence, they said study, listening to God, including reading scriptures. For service, they said serve, uh, acts of kindness. For gifts, they said give uh, generously toward God and others. And for witness, they said share witnessing to your faith. Now, of course, uh, the, the pastor of the Church of the Resurrection, the United Methodist Church of the Resurrection in Kansas City is uh, Adam Hamilton, who um, wrote the, the Bible study that we did for Lent this year. Actually, we started it at Lent last year, but that kind of blew up. So we, we uh, did it for Lent this year, uh, the walk, five uh, practices essential to, uh, to Christians. So today I want to talk about a little bit about um, prayers, uh, worshiping, including prayer, because, because that's what we're seeing uh, at work here with, with the disciples for the, the 10 days that we're, they were together worshiping and praying. Everything that God created is a reflection of God's glory. When we look at plants around us, they display God's glory. When we hear the birds singing or the bees buzzing or the lions roaring, they are, whether conscious of it or not, giving glory to God. When we see the maple leaves turning red and orange and yellow in the fall or snow blanketing the earth in the winter or the dogwoods blooming in the spring, all of that is a display of God's glory. And on a clear night, don't, don't you just love looking up at the stars on a clear night and Maybe you can see no moon or part of the moon. If there's no moon, the stars seem to be even brighter. They, too, declare God's praise. Now, the birds can't help but sing. The stars can't help but shine. But human beings are unique in all creation. We can decide whether we will give thanks to God, praise God, and seek to glorify God with our lives, or not. But there is something within us that longs to worship just as birds need to sing. Worship is how we respond to a creator who is uniquely worthy of our admiration, our reverence, our awe, our thanksgiving, and our praise. When we worship, we acknowledge God's glory, majesty, greatness, power, goodness. We recognize and honor God as God while recognizing that we are not God, but the children or creatures 
of God. The disciples, after worshiping and praying for 10 days in community, after witnessing the ascension of Jesus, were opening open to the work, working of the Holy Spirit in a way that was unprecedented. They burst out of that room and they were a living hallelujah to the glory of God's creation. They spoke the good news not only in a way that those who spoke other languages could understand, but in a way that was life-changing for all who spoke and heard it. And the church was born. The body of Christ was complete. Worship and prayer was the birth of the church, and through worship and prayer, we find communion with God and the grace and strength and love to live as God's people. Praise be to God, our creator, Christ, our redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our healer and comforter. Now, one thing we're doing this uh, this morning in, in church that we're I can't we're not going to do here um, I'm not going to do here on YouTube is that we are baptizing one this morning and we are are uh, confirming five others. Baptism is an act that looks back with gratitude on what God's grace has already accomplished. It is here and now an act of God's grace and looks forward to what God's grace will accomplish in the future. And so now I call on you to recall your own baptisms and be thankful. The God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. Out of God's great love, God has created you. Jesus Christ, out of his great love, has redeemed you. The Holy Spirit, out of great love, has lifted and inspired you to go in peace and service throughout God's creation, proclaiming the good news of peace, love, hope, and joy to all. So now, go in peace.